Hi, this is Graphically Alex coming at you with all things fat related. If that's something that interests you, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Miss Alyssa Goldwater, which she's not primarily a fat activist, but she does have some fat activisty takes. Um, this person was suggested to me suggested to me by Caleb. So thank you so much, Caleb. And I want to go ahead and cover her. I'm going to go in blind. I haven't looked at anything that she said. Not really. So I'm going to try like a blind reaction to these and we'll see what happens. So let's go. Why do you think the plus size community? So this one says why fat people have so many health problems. He has so many health problems. My name's Alyssa, and I'm your Orthodox Jewish plus size friend. I want to preface this by saying what I always say. There can be skinny, unhealthy people. There can be fat, unhealthy people. There can be skinny, healthy people. And there can be fat, healthy people. That's no. So the last one is where you got it wrong. It depends on what you're defining as fat. Again, fat is such a subjective term. If you're talking about somebody who's maybe 10 pounds overweight or something, they might be perfectly fine, especially if they're young. But it's like, if you're talking about somebody 100 pounds overweight, they're not going to be healthy, period. If you're talking about somebody 200 pounds overweight, they're not going to be healthy, period. Um, I think we need to acknowledge that obesity... I always say, in my honest opinion of it, as, you know, take it for what it is, as somebody who's experienced it, I believe that obesity is a symptom of a disease. And that disease can either be physical, something like hypothyroidism, PCOS, or it can be mental, something like addiction or toxic ritualistic behavior. That's what we will call it for YouTube's sake. So I would say in those areas, either way, it's a symptom. It's a symptom of a greater issue. It's not the issue in and of itself. However, being fat is hormonally act like it, it does cause hormonal issues. So it is bad to be fat from a health perspective as well. But usually you don't just become fat just because you became fat. Like there's usually something else going on unless if it's at a much lower level of obesity where you're barely even obese or you're just kind of chubby a little bit. Maybe in that situation, it wouldn't be that bad. It is a gradient. It just depends. It all depends. But I would say for the most part, it's bad if you are fat for what most people use it for when they're using the word fat it's bad for your health both too there has to be an issue to get you there and there has to be and there it, there are issues caused by being there that's what i would say just because you are fat does not mean that you are unhealthy society depends on how fat you are so Again, I really don't like the word fat in a medical sense because it's not helpful because it doesn't mean anything. When she says fat, she's arguing that somebody who's 10 pounds overweight is the same as somebody who's 100 pounds overweight. It's not the same whatsoever. It's completely different. So you can't really just say the word fat and then say that they're unhealthy because it's so subjective. But if you say obese, then yes, they're unhealthy. Anything above obesity, morbid obesity, super morbid obesity, yes. You're less healthy and then you're less healthy. It's just a fact. It is not healthy to be obese. Society likes to say that when you are fat, you have all sorts of health problems. That can happen to someone. It's not society. It's also what people experience like I'm sure you've experienced and I certainly have experienced and pretty much every other very fat person has experienced or will soon <laughs> over the age of 25 you're gonna feel it period in any body size. Something that I want to touch on is one of the reasons why 
fat people might have health problems. And that is because of medical weight. It's because of bad eating habits. It's because of bad quality food. Usually that's a health risk or that decreases your health with the low quality food that people typically eat to get fat. Um, it has to do with inactivity, being sedentary is unhealthy. It's not natural to the body. It isn't good for you to be sedentary. This is not the channel where I'm going to tell you it's totally fine. You don't have to worry about exercise. No, I don't believe that at all. I think exercising is incredibly important. Um, so no, that's not a thing. Um, the other reasons are the hormonal imbalances caused by being obese, super morbidly obese. If you have a fatty liver, that creates hormone imbalances. It makes your estrogen go really high because your liver gets rid of excess estrogen. If your liver is fatty, then you are going to have problems getting rid of excess estrogen, which is going to be higher, which is going to cause other things to get higher, like cortisol and serotonin and all these other things. And then you're going to feel depressed and then you're going to have weird cardiovascular symptoms and there's more of a cancer risk and you could have diarrhea or constipation and like it just messes everything up it is like it's horrible it is a horrible experience you are lying through your teeth absolutely it's awful we all know it's awful and you're not going to sit here i mean look at the list of cancers that being obese increases your risk of getting. There's a long list. There's a lot of them. Colon cancer, for example, that one just came to my mind. But I'm sure pretty much all the other ones, not all of them, but many of them. I mean, be real. And again, the cardiovascular health, how many supremely overweight people who have struggled, who have problems with breathing? There can be cognitive issues within supermorbid obesity. It's really bad for you. It's really bad to be supermorbidly obese. Like, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it and be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. There's some people who are healthy. No, no, it's a no. There are so many problems. Depression. You're going to be depressed. You can feel excessively restless. Being obese makes you have low dopamine. So you're going to have depression. And you can have um, ADHD symptoms from obesity. You can struggle with hypothyroidism really easily because your estrogen is so high. And estrogen opposes thyroid hormone. So then that can cause restlessness too, can cause issues within digestion where you can't digest nutrients properly or you can't absorb them properly because your stomach acid gets really low. I mean, do you want me to sit here and just go on and on? Because it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. You have more of a risk for getting parasites because of the low stomach acid when you're obese. You get sick more often. You have financial problems usually because you usually can't work as much. Um, and that's not even talking about the social costs of obesity, which I'm not even really going to get into. But there's a lot of stuff there too. A lack of quality of life. An issue, issues with confidence, issues with when you're big enough fitting functionally like on a plane or in a theater so what you're just not going to go on a trip ever you're not going to go to a show ever so again your reduced quality of life all just so you can maintain super morbid obesity for what what's the prize what are you getting out of it who's happy for you who why are you so proud of it it doesn't make sense it's like these people they look, I'm not going to sit here and gaslight people in my audience who are thinner or who have never been fat. It takes a lot of effort to maintain super morbid obesity. You have to eat a lot. So you usually are going to have one hell of a physical health problem to get there and stay there, or you're going to have serious mental issues to get there and stay there because it, it's 
very difficult to sustain on pretty much all levels. And it's a constant, you're constantly seeing and reminded of how awful it is with every single moment. Like I remember I couldn't even be comfortable just laying down. Like you get to a point sometimes where you can't even be comfortable laying down in bed. You're literally struggling to breathe laying down. And you want me to, you want to tell me, oh yeah, they're healthy, da da da. No. Even when I was young, when I was 21 years old, I had horrible migraines constantly. I'd have panic attacks or not really panic, but anxiety attacks very, very often, migraines. I had horrible mood issues. I mean, I, I constantly was fearing health issues because I had all these symptoms. I didn't know that it was hypothyroidism at the time. But again, I mean, it's all fun and games, right? When you are super morbidly obese, your risk for hypothyroidism is incredibly high, to, so high to the point that I feel like I could literally say pretty much everybody who is SMO has it because your estrogen is just so high. And again, it's all a joke. It's all a joke, isn't it? It doesn't matter. None of it is real. None of this is real. No, it's like you're gaslighting people. And it's, you know, it freaks me out because these weird nutritionists and these people who have never been fat, they hear this person say this and they believe them. You're not going to fool me. Not for a second. I didn't even get into diabetes and all that. There's so many things, you guys. So many things. Gosh. Weight stigma. So many plus size people. Oh, yes, the stigma. That's the only reason. Is that why when I was alone in 2020, in pretty much complete isolation, I had the worst health I've ever had? Ever? It was worse than it ever was, ever. There was no stigma to be seen. I was working from a computer. I was in a call center. Nobody saw what I looked like. Almost all the people, almost all the customers I talked to thought I was a woman. So what, what weight stigma was hurting my health when I was behind a telephone? Where's this weight stigma that made my health worse? Mm. Do they realize how dumb they sound when they say this? Do they realize it? Because I honestly wonder. ...by being demonized for our weight and being told that we were bad by doctors. So we push off... Yeah, because everybody lives and dies by what their doctor says. This is ridiculous. You barely see your doctor sometimes, unless if you already have all these other, all these health issues, which I wonder why, probably because you're obese. Otherwise, you barely see a doctor, maybe once a year, if you're healthy, right? You just do your checkup or whatever. Think about it, you know? Off that doctor's appointment, we self-diagnose or we just push through the pain for way too long than we need to. I have heard way too... People push through the pain of obesity because they don't want to stop eating. That's, and there's a lot of reasons why. Like I said, it could be genuine hunger, which makes sense. Um, but you need to cure your, or your, you know, get treatment for your hormone issues that are making you hungry. It could be anxiety. That's toxic ritualistic behavior, you know? It's not something you should just be cool with. Just grind along until you, you die of it, you know? And I understand because I used to be in that toxic ritualistic world and I just, I could not even fathom being out of it. I couldn't even fathom it. It, it felt like if I were to ever stop, it'd be like being in an alternate universe. Like it was just there. It seemed impossible. And I understand that. But you better be fighting that with all of your breath. Because depending on how severe it is, it can take years to get it under control. And you do not always have years of time when you are super morbidly obese. And you can't be wasting your time listening to someone like this. 
because you don't have the time to sit and touch your belly and say how proud you are when you're super morbidly obese. You don't. You don't. It's tough to get out. And you can't be doing all that. Like, you can't waste your time. You need to be getting to the root of the problem. You need to be doing therapy, doing spiritual work, you know, getting help from anybody you can. You need to do things on your own to get over it. I mean, there's so many steps. I, you know, I, nobody can tell you what your triggers are and all that. I can't tell you. I know what mine were. I should maybe do a video about that at some point, what mine were specifically. But everybody's triggers are different. But it's like you can't, you have to figure all that out. And it's like people don't realize how serious that is. Like I wasn't even aware I had that problem. Like you, you can be so delusional. And I wonder if this person is like this. Are you that delusional? Because it's like, I just don't understand. What is this desire to stay obese? Where is that coming from? What is the desire for it? I don't understand it anymore. It's like part of me, is, that part of me is dead, I guess. I don't understand it anymore. For what? What's the prize? What, what do you get out of it? I mean, really, just think about it, you know? Too many stories, just like this one, where a doctor tells someone that all they okay, need... Okay, let's see. I was the same way. I literally was self-diagnosing that the reason I was feeling so tired was because I was fat, because that's what doctors would say. Turns out I had leukemia. Look, let's have a real moment. When you are really big like that, you need to take health care seriously. There very much could be something wrong. Like I said, your risk for cancers, many, many different kinds, goes way up if you are super morbidly obese. I had to worry about it. I still do worry about it a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I do. I think about it. I have to consider these things still because I'm still not great. I'm a lot better than I was, though. So it's a lot less likely than it was a few years ago. But certainly when it was still getting worse, I had to worry about it. You have to. Because when you're super morbidly obese, when you are in that state, your body is at risk all the time. And you can feel it on a visceral level. It's hard to explain if you haven't been in that. But it's like you know. You know there are health issues. You know you need to be careful. You know that you could have cancer you know that you could have, you know, any of these things that are, are crazy. You, like, you know you could have diabetes. Like, I'm still not out of the woods of that. You get what I'm saying? I know it's possible I could have it. You know what I, you know what I mean? It's like you have to still consider these things. You can't be blasé about it. And I understand. What I would say is, most people that are that big, to get that big and to sustain it, they already don't give a shit about their health. Let's just be real. So when they feel sick or there's something wrong, they don't go to the doctor because they already don't care. And I think that's what the real cause is. Because there's a difference between being fat tired and being like deathly tired. And like I said, I know I've been fat and tired and I've been deathly tired. For me, it was hypothyroidism. It was deathly severe. It was horrible. It was horrible. So it's like, you want to sit there and act like you can't tell there's something wrong with you? If a doctor told me, oh, there's nothing wrong with you, I'd say, you're full of it. I know there is. I mean, it was visible. You could see, like, I had dark circles under my eyes. I was like, I looked like a zombie. I mean, I wasn't, I was so unwell. It's ridiculous. And I knew in 2020, I had to stay home and stay safe or I would be at serious risk if I caught that disease at that time. Because you have to take your health seriously. Otherwise, you could just die. 
you know? So it's like, I think a lot of big people, they just don't care. I think that's the problem. Or they only care a little bit. They only care to get the next pill. They don't care beyond that. And a lot of very overweight people, they don't have any consideration for their quality of life. They don't care. You get used to it and you just think that that's how it has to be. And I don't know what it is in an obese person's brain where they're just so quick to think this is how it has to be, but it's there. It's very much a thing and it's not true. And even as I step out of different levels, I'm shocked that it doesn't have to be the way that it was. It shocks me. It's like walking on water. That's how I describe it to people. It feels like I'm in an alternate world. It feels surreal. But all I can say is people like you, you're making the problem worse. You keep making it worse. You make it worse. You push people further into their delusions. You push people further into the pit of super morbid obesity. That's what you're doing when you do this. You're pushing people that are vulnerable. You're making them stay stuck. You're encouraging them to stay stuck. That's awful. I could never, I, I just, oh, I could not live with myself if I was doing what you're doing. It's sick. And then you try to act like you're compassionate. It's horrible to do is lose weight and they won't feel as tired and they'll feel better and it turns out to be something really scary like god forbid cancer leukemia and unfortunately in so many of these cases yeah like i said you need to take everything seriously when you're small you got to because it, it could absolutely be anything you know anything I, I have a family member who's super morbidly obese that has cirrhosis. I mean, stuff goes on. It's not good. And it's cirrhosis due to obesity. It's, it's bad. You have to be careful. If you're that big, you cannot be like, oh, I'm fine. You're probably not fine. You cannot Anna O'Brien your way out of it. You need to go. Like, if you feel something, you should go. Period. Is if the doctors had treated the fat person as if they... If you can. If you don't have health insurance or whatever, I understand. I'm not judging in that regard. But I'm saying if you have the access and you feel like something's seriously wrong, then you need to go. Because it probably is. Like, I know that that's really negative to say, but sometimes we have to be negative. And when you're super morbidly obese, you're in a negative situation. So it could be, it could always get worse. <sighs> okay, let's continue. They were someone in a smaller body and tried to diagnose them that way instead of slapping weight loss as the solution to their ailments. They could it's usually, if it gets that bad, it's not the only solution. But it will usually help almost any condition you have because obesity is inflammatory. It is estrogenic, severely estrogenic. It is all these things that tend to make things worse. It raises your cortisol, which is not great either for a lot of diseases. You know, it's very, very inflammatory. Put it to you that way. So even if it's not going to cure it to lose the weight, it can help it. It can make a lot of things more manageable. Obesity is like gasoline that flares up any fire you have going on in your body. It makes everything worse. Every single problem will become worse due to your obesity. There's no benefit. I don't care what these people say. Would have been saved. I'm not saying that a fat person can't have heart problems. What I am saying is that we they typically will. Weight loss is not always the solution to problems. The only solution. Problems that plus size people have. Why do you think? The only solution. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I guess I'll call it at this. I don't know what this, why this one really bothered me a lot, but I'm just gonna let it go. 
I guess I was going to do more, but I'm like, honestly, I guess there was enough there. Let me know what you guys think down below. I would love your perspectives. And yeah, let's keep the discussion going. I love reading your comments. And if you like this, please subscribe. And I talk about this a lot. I talk about obesity and all these things a lot. I will talk to you guys again very soon. Have a good rest of your day, night, whatever. Peace.